I'm Sandy Tuxvig and this is What's the Dickens, a quiz show about culture and not, in fact, about Charles Dickens. Although if you've seen Dave Gorman's facial hair, you may well have been confused. Uh, with Tim Brooke Taylor tonight is a comedian who presented the award-winning BBC show Hurrah for Cancer, a series he hopes to follow up soon with Let's Hear It for Herpes. Please welcome Andre Vincent. <laughs> And with Dave Gorman is a journalist who favours the legalisation of cannabis and is a prominent supporter of the Liberal Democrats. Uh, the two quite often go together, I believe. Uh, please welcome Rosie Boycott. <laughs> Our first round is called Losing the Plot. Can you name the book, film, song or musical from the much reduced plot I will give you? So buzz in when you think you know the answer. The first one is a film, OK? Lonely Farm Boy meets Old Codger. <laughs> yes. Brokeback Mountain 2. <laughs> <laughs> No. Uh, of Mice yes. of Men. What? Of Mice and Men. Of Mice and Men? No, I like the idea of it, but no. They go off to rescue a princess with a ridiculous hairstyle. Uh, Rapunzel. No. Uh, they're helped by a tin man and a hairy animal. <coughs> yes. Wizard of Oz. No. Oh. Uh, there's a bit of a shoot up. Uh, it all ends happily ever after until the next time and the next time and then the time before. Oh, it's a Star Wars then. Yeah, Star, Star Wars. Star Wars. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely right. <laughs> It was a little tease putting Tin Man in, wasn't it? I think. Yeah, we yeah, that threw us. Yeah. Yeah, okay. but you all thought that, that the Wizard of Oz starts with a young boy meeting an old codger. Yes, but, but they go off to rescue a princess with a ridiculous hairstyle. It's not in the Wizard of Oz. No, exactly. That's yeah. I mean, none we of heard you. the word Tin yeah. Man yeah. and we panicked. Yes. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly right. It's like working with Pavlov's dogs now. <laughs> This is a film. World doesn't get destroyed by giant rock because of dramatic rescue by a group of deep core drillers. Yes. Armageddon. Armageddon, absolutely right. Well done. I've got it now. <laughs> OK, this one is a book. Spoilt little rich girl falls in love with boring bloke. Dark, handsome sod provides timely distraction. There's a war and a bit of a fire. Yes. Gone with the wind. Gone with the wind. Yeah. <laughs> it all goes horribly wrong and everyone goes their separate ways. Has anybody seen the musical of Gone with the Wind that's in the West End at the moment? With Darius. It is longer oh. than the Civil War itself. <laughs> Surely it's not still running. Uh, I, it, was, it was still running when I left. Um, and actually there was a great moment because uh, uh, there was a guy who hadn't... Second half and we'd all been there for a very long time already. And uh, there was a guy who hadn't got a very big part. He was playing a vermin Yankee. And uh, there was a moment when uh, Scarlett is going to shoot him. I hope I'm not giving anything away. Uh, and <laughs> a woman had come back rather late from the lavatory uh, and happened to be sitting in the front row. And she was wearing a most astonishing fuchsia dress. And she timed her return to her seat uh, with this man getting shot and dying in the most dramatic manner. He shot towards the stage and missed her by about this much. As she, and the woman just went, whoa, like that. <laughs> she shot back into her seat. Huh. And... Got the biggest round of applause of the entire evening. <laughs> <laughs> Seemed to me the war would have been over quicker if you just put Yankees in cannons and shot them at people. It would have all been a fantastic thing. It's one of the worst things I've ever seen. Uh, this is a song. A uh, bloke goes to girlfriend's place, sees she's with another bloke, he goes mental and kills her. It's a cheery song. <laughs> bloke goes to girlfriend's place, See, she's with another bloke, he goes mental and kills her. And the title of the song is... Yes? Delilah? Delilah. Oh, Absolutely oh, right. oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very bad. Lovely Tom Jones. Uh, OK, here's a musical. Twin boys separated at birth. Yes. Blood Brothers. Blood Brothers! Yeah. Oh. On fire! Yes, yes. I have to say, when it comes to a musical, look out. You know, I might be a working-class lad from Penge, but believe me, I love a musical. I, do you know what? I love a bad musical. Really? Yeah. I love... Uh, there was a fantastic musical that only lasted for about three and a half performances. Uh, but they made a musical of Hiroshima. Now... <laughs> <laughs> and it was called Out of the Blue. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and it was nicknamed by the crew Out of the Blue, Into the Red. Um, <laughs> Or a flash in Japan. Uh, it was uh, what, what one of the worst of thing? things I've what, what ever seen. What was the storyline? <laughs> uh, dreadful. The storyline was truly dreadful. It had some of the best lyrics I've ever heard. There was a moment, a guy's looking for his daughter who's been 
a little bit too close to the conflagration. And um, uh, he meets a doctor and he says, oh, your daughter is alive and well. She's working as a nurse in my hospital. <laughs> I had to be taken from the theatre eating my cardigan. It was a... <laughs> Blood Brothers is the story of twin boys separated at birth, one of whom ends up a toff and one of whom ends up in prison. It's the story of Geoffrey Archer and his evil twin. <laughs> Geoffrey Archer. Uh, we also heard the plot of Delilah by Tom Jones. Tom Jones is apparently so desirable that when women see him perform, they're compelled to throw their knickers at him. Uh, can I just say I've never been to a Tom Jones concert, which is just as well. If my knickers landed on his head, he'd be smothered. <laughs> be like having a marquee come at you. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Next round is called Balance the Books. The questions have a financial feel, and to help you out, we'll give you a choice of three answers. So, Tim and Andre, which of these soundtrack albums has sold the most copies worldwide? Was it Greece? The Sound of Music, I love The Sound of Music, uh, or Phantom of the Opera. Oh, my word. I yes. Would, I think they're trying to get us to say The Sound of Music, wouldn't you have thought? Because I would have thought Greece. Would, yeah, it could be. Biggest I, seller? Be. I think I've got a feel. I mean, let, look at it. I wouldn't have thought it'd be Phantom of the Opera. I can't see it being Phantom. No, no. Um, Greece or Sound of Music? Biggest selling soundtrack album. I, I just, because Greece, Greece, I remember it being in the charts, Sound of the Music. That appeals to people who don't particularly like musicals necessarily Greece. I think I think Greece. Shall we go yes. with Greece? Yes, we're Take going final answer? We're yes. going Greece. So if you two, it's between the sound of music and the Phantom <laughs> of the Opera. Sound of music. Sound of music with that. Oh uh, it's Phantom of the Opera, I win. Oh. Yay! <laughs> Phantom of the Opera cast recording has sold twenty four million copies. Uh, Greece has sold a mere 20 and The Sound of Music just 11. I love The Sound of Music. Just 11? That's because they all go to the show and they sing along. Maybe just, they just have don't you, need have it. You, have you been? Well, I haven't. Have you Would been you to one of those sing-along ones? Would you go with me? I, I've, I've already been and we went and we had um, AstroTurf all over ourselves and we went as the hills who were alive. <laughs> <laughs> Phantom of the Opera, a hideous, ugly man, his face distorted beyond belief. <laughs> His Lordship done half right good musicals. Right, um, <laughs> Dave and Rosie. Which of these films had the lowest production budget? Okay, was it Super Size Me, The Blair Witch Project, or Napoleon Dynamite, the lowest production budget? Well, I'm going to rule out Napoleon Dynamite straight away because that's a proper film with a proper cast and, and all sorts of things. And it's dynamite costs a lot. And yeah, and they, you know, it's just it, it, it has had to, actors it in it. It has to be super size me because all you've got to do is pay for three meals in McDonald's a day, and we can well, work that out, can't we? Except, well, he, he did it for a month, well, yeah, and he on, and so he had 30, a proper camera and thirty he had, days. Ten pounds a day, so that's three hundred quid on food. No, he had he had animation and things in his film as well, and that cost money. That's expensive stuff. And it was more recent and everything's gone up. I mean, even the price of tape's gone up since the Blair oh, Witch Project. Know, you know more about this. OK, well, right, I'll, I'll go to you. I'm, I'm, well, I'm going to be wrong, but because every <laughs> time we play this game, I use cold, hard logic yeah. to arrive at the right answer, and I'm wrong. You want to go cold, with hard logic women's tells me, intuition you want to go with? Uh, Supersize me. Is that your final answer? It was Rosie's answer, women's intuition. I think it was a hint, yes. No. So, ah. um, <laughs> the Blair Witch Project or Napoleon Dynamite? That was constantly being publicised as being the cheapest budget ever, yeah. the Blair Witch Project. Absolutely right, right. the Blair Witch Project. I did, completely set you up. Yeah, because you had too many points, so I was trying to make you lose. Uh, quick supplementary question, they all three premiered at the same film festival, anybody know? Sundance. Them? Sundance Film Festival, that's right, you should get a point back there, that was rather good. Uh, the Blair Witch Project cost just $35,000 to make and has grossed... <gasps> $250 million. That's fantastic. The Blair Witch Project continues to reap rich rewards, people are. Actually buying those memoirs, you know. <laughs> Tim and Andre, which of these celebrities owns a Damien Hurst original? Is it Victoria Beckham? Brad Pitt or Hugh Grant, who owns a Damien Hurst original? I wouldn't have thought Victoria would have it on her own, would you? I mean, I'm talking about this. Uh... I, you see Brad Pitt? So I can't see Brad Pitt. No. I can't. I, you I see, can Victoria see... Beckham, I could see. She'd have no idea who it was, I guess, but would go, oh, no, let's have one. It'd be lovely. Um, what about David? Wouldn't he want one, too? Oh, right, you think they'd have to have two? Well, I thought so, yeah. Yeah, all, I can tell you they're all interested in art, so it's possible it could be any one of the three. How do you know they're interested? Ah, uh, because I have facts. 
at right. my fingertips. I think it's Hugh Grant, but I'm, I'm happy to go along with anything you may say, partner. <laughs> I'll go with you, Mr. T <laughs> oh, all right, Brooke then. Taylor. Hugh Grant we're going we're for. We're going for Hugh Grant. Well, and many people have, but sadly it's not the correct answer. <laughs> uh, Victoria Beckham or Brad Pitt? I think I know Brad Pitt was buying Banksy stuff recently when he was in in the states. Sure I no, think you can have an extra point for that. They've just spent a million pounds, he and Angelina, on uh, work by Banksy. Yes. yes. Uh, so I'm going to go with Brad Pitt. Just think he's more likely. And again, I win. It's Victoria oh. Beckham. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Victoria Beckham was sitting here. I think she'd have got it wrong as well, though. Well, um, David or David. Um, <laughs> What is the matter with him? Do his shorts not fit? Um, David paid a reported £250,000 for a heart-shaped painting studded with dead butterflies as an anniversary present for Victoria. Oh. It's a sort of man's idea of a lovely gift. Isn't it? Look what I got you, dead butterflies. <laughs> <laughs> that. Tripled in price, it's very sensible. Victoria Beckham owns a Damien Hirst original. After the Rebecca Lewis affair, she commissioned the little-known work David's Testicles in Formaldehyde. <laughs> Dave and Rosie, which of these authors received the highest reported advances for their books? Was it O.J. Simpson, P. Diddy, or David Hasselhoff? Um, okay. um, I don't think it's Hasselhoff, because I think he's a bit of a... I don't think he's, he's got quite the market in America that the others have got. O.J. Um, and, Sim and P. Diddy, both still huge names uh, in, in the States. O.J. Simpson, I don't know if we're allowed to call him a murderer. I wouldn't say it to his face in case he killed me. I get for O.J. You're going to say O.J.? I'm, I'm not sure. I think P. Diddy could be. P. Diddy, originally, his real name Sean Coombs. Then he became Puff Daddy. Then he became P. Diddy. Then he changed his name again to Diddy on the grounds he said that uh, the P is getting between him and his but fans. Did, but did he manage to produce five different editions to confuse everybody, which is how he got such a big advance? That's that might do it. Although legally we have to call him P. Diddy in this country because he was sued by someone called Diddy. Okay. So he's P. Diddy over here, but he's Diddy in the States. I'm losing the will to live. What's the answer? <laughs> is it Doddy? Is it Doddy? No. Uh, uh, oh, uh, P. Diddy. Uh, you could, could you agree, the two of you? Okay, you're right. I'll go with you. You were wrong last time. And the answer is? P. Diddy. P. Diddy. Doesn't actually really matter. No. Um, it's O.J. Simpson. Oh. <laughs> That's what we were going to say. We were going to so say sorry. that. Uh, O.J. Simpson got three and a half million dollars advance. P. Diddy got three hundred thousand dollars and had to give it back because he failed to write his book. <laughs> <laughs> mine, mine was ten times ahead of you. You're, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Yes. And David I'm... Hasselhoff got one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. P. Diddy is a multi-million selling rap star with his own range of clothing and jewellery, making him the most successful of Ken Dodd's protégés. <laughs> Join us in a couple of minutes when our teams will be trying to make sense of our picture clues. Here's one for you at home. Can you find the song title hidden in this montage? What the Dickens? Before the break, I asked if you could find the song title hidden in our picture montage. Anybody know the correct answer? Yes, please, miss. Yes, Mr. Uh, Coleman. You turn back time. Turn back time. Absolutely right. Oh, nice job. Yeah. Uh, the full title of the song recorded by Cher is, of course, "If I Could Turn Back Time." Open brackets. I'd tell Sonny not to go skiing in the forest. Close brackets. <laughs> <laughs> It's called Picture This. We've hidden famous names in picture montages. Can you find them? Now, they may seem easy at first, but they will get harder. So, Tim and Andre, this is a film character. Oh. What a devilishly good-looking world leader that is. Brown. Brown. Something brown. Got that. We've got it. Yeah. Got it. Oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. Give us a second. It's, it's our, our turn. Yes. Excuse me. We're yes. going to interrupt yes. yours. Who's got the longest tongue out of the two? <laughs> um, uh, Gordon. Gordon. Gordon, Gordon Flash, no. Can I hurry you, character oh. from a film? 